Yeah, oh, Lorraine. Lorraine, on, Lorraine, you're on mute. You're still on mute. I was calling someone. Lisa. Are you coming on? <laughs> Father God, we thank okay, you. We bye. praise you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you for this prayer time, Father God. We thank you for the Bible study. Mm -hmm. We thank you for the, the instructor who will facilitate and lead us and teach us your word. We thank you, Father God, for the desire to get closer to you because speaking, learning your word is learning about you. And learning your word brings us closer to you. So we just thank you for that, Father God. We lift up every person that is on this class, whether they're in today or not. We lift yeah. them up to you, every member yeah. of this class. Mm -hmm. And we also say a special prayer for the situation in Baltimore with mm. the bridge and those cars that, that went into the water, Father God, that they maybe they can still recover some of those people. Father mm -hmm. God, we lift up the families of those that uh, uh, mm -hmm. went into the water, Father God, because I know that they're troubled about their loved ones. So we lift them up as well, Father God. We never know. You just don't know from day to day. Uh, mm -hmm. Like Reverend Brinson used to say, you're praying for someone else to yeah, today you could be praying for yourself or your, you know, tomorrow. So, Lord, we just lift them up to you and we thank and we praise you as we learn that we will all receive a word from you, that we will understand and learn all about uh, the what we're studying today. We just thank and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So hello to anybody who I haven't said hello to. Uh, we welcome anybody that's online. Uh, yeah. As is our custom, we'll just review what we did last week. And last week we finished chapter 27. And then we began chapter 28. And we know that chapter 28 and 29 are chapters that go together. So... Uh, Chapter 27, we started with verse 12, and it was the Lord giving Moses his marching orders. He reminded Moses of the reason he would not be going into the promised mm -hmm. land. And we'll remember that this was around, around chapter 20 when the people were... Uh, they were lamenting and grumbling and quarreling because they had no water. And when Moses and Aaron went to God, God told them to just go to the rock and speak to the rock and water will come out. Well, I guess Moses and Aaron, and we can't say too much about them, but they were frustrated and upset. And instead of speaking to the rock, and letting the people see God's holiness, his specialness, and what he was all about, they had a they went to the rock and had a, you know, you guys make me sick. You're always doing this, that, and the third, and now I gotta, I gotta give you water out of this rock, which was a no-no because they were not, they were not providing the water, and they tried to, they took credit for it. They took. God's glory for it. And so they struck the rock instead of just speaking to the rock. And so for that, at that time, God told them, he remonstrated with them and told them that, that they would not see the promised land. And we'll, um, I forget what chapter it was, sometime later on, Aaron was called to his his follow to his uh, ancestors mm -hmm. because he was also not going to see the promised land. So then the Lord told him, "Okay, now go up into the Abiram Mountains." And I was looking at my little stuff here, my little things, and the place where they were camped. If you can see it, the little camp, and you see some of the tents and whatnot, and you see the sanctuary, you see these mountains 
-hmm. up above. I think you can see him a little bit, right? Yeah. Yes. And anyway, he told him to go up into those mountains and uh, just look. They were on the east side of Jordan and you could go up in those mountains and you would look over and you would be able to see the lands on the other side. He said, you can go up there, look over the cross of Jordan and you'll see the promised land. You'll see the land that I'm giving to the Israelites, but you will not go. You are going to be gathered to your ancestors like Aaron was. So uh, Moses accepted the judgment. I mean, there was nothing really he could do, but he did understand. He can't repent it, I, I think, of what he had done. But his concern was for the leadership of the Israelite community. What are they going to do without me? What are they going to do without a leader? So he asked the Lord to appoint a leader who would or could lead the people and they would follow this person. He did not want the Israelites to be like sheep without a shepherd. So the Lord said to him, Take Joshua, the son of Nun, because he has the spirit of leadership in him. He can lead. Now, we, when we thought about that, we, we remember that Joshua was actually Moses' right-hand man. In Exodus, jo Joshua was with Moses when he went up on the mount for 40 days. He uh, kept notes. He uh, did. He assisted Moses in whatever he, Moses had to do. Joshua was also there when Amalek was defeated in Exodus seventeen, uh, verses eight through ten. Amalek uh, attacked the Israelites right before they got to uh, Mount Sinai, and uh, remember the account where Moses stood with. Aaron and her, and as long as he held up the staff, the Israelites was, were winning, but when his arms were tired, they were losing, so he, uh, Aaron and her ended up holding his arms up, and the, the Israelites were uh, victorious. Joshua was the commander of those fighting men, and Joshua was also one of the two spies of those 12 that went and spied out the uh, promised land, Joshua and uh, Caleb were the only two that came back and said, we can take this land. And so we see that Joshua was always in the mix. And so God said, take Joshua. So Moses told uh, Moses was told to bring Joshua in front of the whole community, in front of the community, with Eliezer the priest. Remember, Aaron is gone, so his son Eliezer is the priest, high priest now, and he was told to lay hands on him, uh, show the community that this is God's choice. And Moses affirmed it by giving Joshua some of his authority so the people would obey and follow him. Now, he explained that Joshua was not from the priestly line and would not be a spiritual leader like Moses, but more a military leader. And with that fact in mind, all decisions would go through Eliezer, who would in turn consult the Lord's will with the Urim. And we remember we they, the Urim was part of that, that breastplate that the high priest wore. It was a mm -hmm. Urim and a Thurim on there. And it is of note that God would not deal with Joshua as he had with Moses. Moses got his direction directly from the Lord. 
You remember we found that out in, I think it was around Numbers 12 when Aaron and Miriam tried to take some of the authority from Moses and God had to tell them, wait a minute, hold up. I don't deal with him like I deal with other people. He's special to me and you don't have that kind of cachet. So uh, God would not deal with Joshua like he did with Moses. Remember, God was always saying, okay, Moses, tell the people this. Moses, tell the people this. God told Moses this. He's not going to, you're not going to see things where it says God told Joshua. Joshua's going to have to go to Eliezer and ask him what the Lord says. And Eliezer is going to use the Urim stone because even he does not have the same kind of cash shape that um, Moses had. So once jo Joshua knew the will of the Lord, he had command of the entire Israelite community. And they would go out when he said and come in when he said. Moses showed the traits of a great leader in that he wanted his followers to go on and be successful when he was no longer around. Mm -hmm. It wasn't enough for him to just, okay, I'm a great leader and when I'm gone, okay, oh well. No, he wanted them to do well. Right. And so that was the end of 27. So in chapter 28. Can I just make a comment there that I just thought about something? Sure. How so many of us leave positions and are, I don't want to say resentful, but we don't want to help the next person out. We don't, you know, I brought you this far until you just make it on your own. You know, I, I don't want to uh, to make sure that you uh, continue to grow or to excel. And so that's what I got out of Moses' concern for the people, knowing that his life was going to be over. I mean, he could have just washed it away and just went on. But no, he wanted to make sure that they still had ground to stand on. That's and, right. Yeah, excellent. That's an excellent, excellent point. Theory. That's absolutely what happened. Mm-hmm. He was saying, you know what? It's not about me. No. It's about posterity and all of that. And I we, think that is something that is. that is lacking in today's world. Yes, a lot of we it. We don't is. want to help anybody. You know, I learned it myself. You go ahead on and learn yours. That's right. You get and that's, not, that's mm -hmm. not the way God would have it. Mm -mm. No. In anything, anything that we do. In anything, in anything. You're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. So uh, then chapter eight, Moses got about his business because he still had things to do before he left. Remember, this is a whole new generation. All that stuff he taught the other people, mm -hmm. they're all gone. And they were these kind of people that didn't want to teach nobody nothing. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> DC. They yeah. they were mad because they had to go, and so they were not in the in the business of trying to get anybody else to know anything. So Moses was beginning his last tutelage of the Israelite community, and he started with instructing this new generation about the sacrificial system and the feast days that were to be observed once they settled in the promised land. He said, okay, you know, I know those other people knew. I talked about them in Leviticus. We saw in Leviticus when they were still at Mount Sinai, how he had tutored, uh, tutored them in that. Remember all the sacrifices were meant to honor and worship God. Mm -hmm. And so Moses went back through all of them. And he started daily, the Israelite priests were to sacrifice two unblemished lambs, one in the morning and one in the evening as burnt offerings. And we need to put this in our hearts and our minds, what the burnt offering was. 
for atonement and reconciliation to God, along with that, a grain offering, which gives thanks to God and it shows our dedication to God. And then a drink offering, which connotes joy and celebration. So plus every Sabbath day, this is weekly now, two lambs as a burnt offering. Again, you keep up the daily offering and you add to it the Sabbath day offering. A grain offering, which was thanks and dedication, a burnt offering, a drink offering, a joy celebration. Then every month on the first day of the month, a burnt offering to atone, grain offerings for Thanksgiving, drink offerings to celebrate. Just keep that going around in your head. And a sin offering, a way to gain forgiveness for sin. So we have daily, weekly, monthly sacrificial offerings to God, which, as he specified, if which done as he specified, sent a sweet aroma to God. Now we have identified identified that sweet aroma today as the prayers of the saints, as the prayers of the righteous. When we when we pray and we seek God's face, that's a sweet smelling aroma to him. So um, we try to put the sacrifices in perspective today, what, what, what it looks like today. So we said that uh, daily prayers in the morning and at night. Then we said prayers weekly on that day of rest. We know it as Sunday. Some people do it on Saturday, whatever. And yeah. monthly acknowledgments or remembrance of God's goodness and greatness. So as we look at it, Daily, two times, we acknowledge and pray to God. On Sunday, we worship and pray to God. Every month, at least once, uh, we worship and remember and pray to God and give thanks and joyful recognition of God's goodness. And that's what's going on here. He is, uh, Moses is teaching them how to worship. God with all of these sacrifices and all of these different things and um, that's where we left off and we are still in numbers 28 and we are at verse 16 I believe it is yeah here it is uh -huh. okay so far we are still learning how to worship God. This new generation, remember he taught it to the old generation, but they died 40 years in the wilderness. And here's the new generation of people counted. So uh, Numbers 28, chapter 16 through 25. On the 14th day of the first month of the Lord's Passover, is to be hit, the Lord's Passover is to be held. On the 15th day of this month, there is to be a festival for seven days. Eat bread made without yeast. On the first day, hold a sacred assembly and do no work, no regular work. Present to the Lord a food offering consisted of a burnt offering of two young bulls one ram, and seven male lambs a year old, all without defect. With each bull, offer a grain of offering of three-tenths of an ipa of the finest flour mixed with oil, with the ram, two-tenths, and with each of the seven lamb, one-tenth. Include one male goat as a sin offering to make atonement for you. Offer these in addition to the regular morning burnt offerings 
in this way, present the food offering every day for seven days as an aroma pleasing to the Lord. It is to be offered in addition to the regular burnt offering and its drink offerings. On the seventh day, hold a sacred assembly and do no regular work. Wow. Okay. Very so. Good. What verse did you stop at, Dolores? 25. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So. Well, hold on, why are you, Dolores? Mm-hmm. Hey, uh, numbers, numbers, we're number 28, 16 through something, right? 16 through 25. 28, 16 through 25, thank you. Okay, great. All right, so. We are talking about the what? Worship. In these verses, the mm -hmm. timeline and the name of this offering. Mm -hmm. Let me get myself accentuated. Okay. On the 14th day of the month, the Lord's what? Sixteenth verse. On the first on the fourteenth day of the first month is the Lord's what? Passover. Passover, exactly. That's the Passover. We do remember mm -hmm. what the Passover is, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We do remember the Passover. We and forget the Passover. Hmm? I said that's something we never want to forget. Right. Mm -hmm. And it was it's it was it started on the first month. Okay. This is a whole it's gonna show you the whole year, what they do the whole year in terms of worship. Mm -hmm. They already started. They said, this is what you do every day. Mm -hmm. This is what you do every week. This is what you do every month. And now they're going to go through the different feasts and festivals that uh, make up the worship. So this one is uh, the first month, the 14th day of the first month. Mm -hmm. and that's the Passover. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then on the 15th day of the month, there's another one. What's it called? Um, I just I just hear Mark that. The 15th day of the month is a joyous uh, seven day festival. That's and right. it's called what? Um, the Lord's Passover? No. Passover is one day, the 14th. Hold on, mm -hmm. hold on. A joyous seven day festival will begin the first day of. I don't see the name of it. You know oh, what? This. We found the name. Um, Let me look in another verse. Back in Leviticus, we can mm -hmm. find the name, but the name of it is the Feast How, of it, Unleavened feast Bread. Of, yeah. It says it right there. Not feast. in my version. No, okay. Feast of but, Unleavened Bread. Yeah, mine is called Festival of Harvest. I guess yeah, that's, mine's... You know, in the description. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. But for how many yeah. days? That was for seven, wasn't it? Yes. Yes, seven days. Seven days. And then again. there were all kinds of offerings. What kinds of offerings were included in the in this feast of seven days, mm -hmm. we know what the Passover was. Remember, yes, right. yeah, yes. they and they had the lamb and all that stuff. But for seven days, they did a feast of unleavened bread. Mm -hmm. Okay, and they did some offerings. What are the offerings that they did in this feast? 
On the burnt offering. Offer a sacrifice of, of, by fire for burnt offering. Burnt offering. That's one of them. Mm -hmm. Burnt offering. Yeah. And then the put grain it in offering. Your spirit. What was the burnt offering? Oh, the grain offering. Put it in your spirit. What was the grain offering for? What else? To the grain offering, if you want to know what the meaning is, yes, the yeah, that rededicating your life, isn't it? Rededicating and Thanksgiving. Don't forget Thanksgiving. That's the biggest mm. part. Of it. Okay. Okay. So, what about the burnt offering? We didn't get the meaning of that yet. Uh, the confession. Uh, confession. Dedication. Mm -hmm. Atonement, mm -hmm. reconciliation, any of those. Right. Okay. Right. Now, what uh, what other offerings were there? Um, let's see. Yeah. Two young bullocks is the burnt that, offering. Did we, we did the burnt offering. Did we do Why isn't that meat? Hmm? No. Why is that not a meat offering? Yes, it was. Burnt offering was oh. uh, in verse 19 it says uh, present the Lord an offering consisting of a burnt offering of two young bulls. Yeah. And then, okay, and so then uh, mm -hmm. what I thought but 20 says and, and that meat offering shall be made with oil. That's uh, which offering. The so which offering is that in verse 20 that they're talking about? The, the one we just talked about. I thought no, it was no, 19. you gotta give it a name. You gotta give it a name. Okay. Offer okay. It says it right there. Yeah. With with each bull offering, mm -hmm. with each bull offer a what kind Ram? of offering? Grain. Grain, exactly. So that's another mm -hmm. offering. We've got the burnt offering to make amends, atonement, reconciliation. We have the grain offering for thanksgiving and dedication. Now keep going and find me those. I'm going to give you a clue. The sin offering. Hmm? Sin. The sin offering, right. The sin offering. And what was the sin mm -hmm. offering for? Mm -hmm. Asking for forgiveness for our sin. Asking for forgiveness for your sin. Mm -hmm. and then that we don't last have sin. Say again. It's there, Jen. We don't have sin. Oh, we don't have sin in 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 this Bible. Yes, it's in there. What? Just kidding. Verse it's sin was not mentioned. Sin was not mentioned. It, in it, verse it's twenty-two. Not like that. Verse, verse oh, I'm twenty-two. 22. So okay. See. Say. Twenty-two, uh -huh. and one goat, and for a sin it, offering to make an atonement for you, shall offer these besides the burnt offering and more. Yeah, you just burnt offering. Did, did you hear it say sin? You just said sin. Mm-hmm. Oh, I was skipped over that. I see. <laughs> you, you, you didn't listen. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Twenty-two sure does. Yeah. <laughs> so so far we have burnt offering. offering. We have mm -hmm. grain offering. We have sin offering. There's one other offering in there. The fellowship, the um, peace, which is food offering. Fellowship is a food offering, but I don't see that in here. Oh, well, let me go to your version. Mine's, you know, different versions. And what does it say? Say it. Read it to me. What? Oh, I just left it. <laughs> oh. Uh, I'm you going said to. the drink offering. There yes. you go, drink offering. Mm -hmm. And what is that drink offering for? Can he offering? And he is. What's the purpose of offering. the drink offering? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. See, we're gonna go over this over and over again till you all can do it like this. <laughs> That's a good thing. Oh, that's gonna be a while for me. It's gonna celebrate <laughs> joy. It's joy. 
Celebration and joy. Exactly. Celebration and joy. And you think that over in your mind. Okay. Let me see. Did I do it down here somewhere? Maybe I did. Maybe I did. I'm maybe. glad that we're going over this again because mm -hmm. that each time we should know it by now, actually, but now it's it's sticking. <laughs> <laughs> because because it, it and Jesus did all of this for us. Yeah. But they didn't have Jesus then. Mm -hmm. So their worship was sacrifice and feast feast days. So mm -hmm. this feast day was the Passover and the feast of unleavened bread, which lasted to seven days. Mm -hmm. And in those seven days, they did a burnt offering. Atonement, reconciliation. They did a grain offering, thanks and dedication. They did a sin offering, forgiveness of their sins. And they did a drink offering, joy mm -hmm. and celebration. Okay. So in the Feast of Unleavened Bread, there were some guidelines. Um, I'm sorry, Dolores, can you hear mm -hmm. me? Yeah. Oh, what what uh, version are you using? I'm using NIV. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Now, just let me know if you have a different version, and then I'll I'll read it to me, and I'll help you with it. <laughs> no, I have the King James, uh, but um, what the different versions are for, it doesn't really stay in this one. That's why I was asking in all no, of them. No, 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 no. It they isn't don't really say in here. This is something that we know because we went through the We went through it before. We, we went through it before. They don't Leviticus. say it in here. Is that correct, Dolores? We started this in Leviticus. Right, oh, in Leviticus. Okay. We, learned, we learned the purpose of the sacrifices way back in Leviticus. And they don't actually say them in here. They just say a burnt offering. And we know right. what a burnt offering is for. They uh -huh. say a grain offering. And we know what a grain offering is for. Uh -huh. They say a sin offering. We know what a sin offering is for. They say a drink offering. We know what a drink offering is for. Mm -hmm. okay. So it's not necessarily written down here. It's just mm -hmm. it was written down Before. back in yeah, yeah, back when we learned yeah, before. Really okay. All righty. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's why we got to get it all in our spirit. Right, yes. Get it all in our spirit. This is, yeah. this is these things happened. We mm -hmm. had to, we had to um, make amends to, to God for our awful behavior. And we thank him for letting us come into his presence. Mm -hmm. uh, I notice here that so far I have we haven't come across a peace offering or a fellowship offering yet. Mm -hmm. I, have, I have yet to see one. But all the you know we the burn offering, the grain offering, the sin offering, the drink offering, we see that a lot. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let, let's go back to what I was uh, trying to get you to see. What are the guidelines Sorry. for this for the uh, feast of unleavened bread? They all had guidelines, things that you have to do. What are the guidelines? Verse eighteen starts with the very first guideline. Mm. Um. Well, we have to present mm -hmm. an offering by fire as a burn offering. Is that what you meant? Two young bulls, mm -hmm. one ram, seven lambs. Uh, -uh I want the guidelines because those are the sacrifices. Oh, oh okay. You didn't have I'm going to ask about them. Yeah, oh. that's the answer to the next question. And no work, no work on to be done on that day. Right. So on the first day, hold a sacred assembly. And no regular work. 
Mm-hmm. How many days was it now? Seven. 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 Okay. Mm-hmm. And on that very mm-hmm. first day, you're going to hold an assembly. Yeah. You know, a church service. Mm-hmm. Right? And you don't do any work. It's almost like a Sabbath, right? Mm-hmm. Don't do any work. What else have they said? What else? What other? Okay, we got seven days. You have a, on the first day, you have a, a holy convocation. You don't do any work, but we all still have the month. You shall offer a sacrifice made by fire for a burnt no, no, offering. That's how we already did the sacrifices. Okay, sorry. Let's come with what's going to happen. Let me see if I can give you a. a oh. First of all, how many days is it? Seven. Yeah. Seven. Yeah. Seven. And what is it that you do on those seven days? No, no work. Work. And no, no. Only the first day, no work. And have a holy convocation. Mm-hmm. How about how about uh, verse seventeen? Read oh, that. Wait, that's that. <laughs> verse seventeen. <laughs> My verse 17 says, um, and the the 15th day of this month is the feast, seven Mm -hmm. days, 11 bread. Mm -hmm. Did you hear it? Mm -hmm. Did you hear it? No, eat the bread for seven days. Unleavened bread. bread. Unleavened. Mm -hmm. Unleavened. There you go. Unleavened bread. That's why it's called unleavened, (laughs) feast of unleavened bread. That means that the bread has no yeast in it, right? Yes, mm-hmm. right. no yeast. So the guidelines, first of all, you eat unleavened bread for seven days. The feast lasts seven days. On the first day, you have a holy convocation. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Then the, the, for the seven days, you make the prescribed offerings. And Mm -hmm. there's one other thing that it says. See, on that first day, you have a holy convocation and you do no work. What else does it say? Let me see where I can say. Okay, go down to 25 Mm. and you'll have it. And on the seventh day, you shall have another holy convocation. Exactly. And you so you see how that works. works. That's so one of those days that was mandatory for all males, all mm. uh, all Jewish Israel Israelites, all Israelite males. That's one of the the uh, mandatory. They had three that they had to do mandatory, and that's one of the mandatory. two kinds of work: the servile work. And uh, it's different. And, uh, and one of them, we had to do no work. The people were to do no work, uh, including the servile work is in, in uh, 25. Yeah. What do you mean by servile workers? That, that I don't know. That, that, that was the two I was going to ask. It seems to be two kinds of work. It says customary it says, work mine version because verse it's eight this what? says verse eight says uh uh shall do no manner of servile work therein that's the king james she's reading and the new uh-huh. king james says customary work mm. so in other words <clears throat> in other words you don't do work mm-hmm there's no work to be done. And then even in the New Living, it says no ordinary work. So like mm-hmm. you said, you're not supposed to do any work. No work, you know. know. You cannot uh, go out and milk your cows or whatever they did. You know what I'm saying. Uh, you cannot uh-huh. till your fields. That is the kind, that's work. It's almost, it's like a Sabbath day. You do no work mm-hmm. on that first convocation day or that last one. 
no work. It's like, yeah, it's like the Sabbath day. Mm hmm. Okay, you get it. I, I I wonder, you know, you know where when um, uh, the the people in charge tried to build up, made books and books of what you could and could not do. I wonder if that God was making it clear, clear, no work. Because sometimes they thought if you carry something in your pocket, it takes work to carry it around. There, there's none. Just, I throw that out. That's, no work. Well, see, that's, that's what happened. Yes. That's mm -hmm. actually what happened. Yes. The people actually took it too far. Mm -hmm. Farther than it was supposed to go. Because yes. if you get up in the morning, that's work. Yeah, getting up. And that's not what he was talking about. Mm -hmm. He just said, you know, if you, if let, let's a uh, modern day, he said, no work. So don't go to work. It's a holy convocation day. Anything you don't like go to work. Or anything, labor. It's a holy convocation day. Don't spend that day cleaning your house. Right. Mm -hmm. It's a holy convocation day. Don't wash your car. Mm -hmm. It's a holy convocation. They don't mow your lawn. That's right. That reminds mm -hmm. me on Sundays. We couldn't do anything on Sundays after church. Mama mm -hmm. wouldn't wash. <clears throat> do anything mm -hmm. like that. So that's that's kind of what, what is being said here. Mm -hmm. This okay. is uh, the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And the guidelines are on that first day, you have a holy convocation. And you do no work. Notice, it didn't say anything about the second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth days. Huh. It went back to the seventh day and, and said, mm -hmm. holy convocation again, no work. Mm -hmm. Just simple. Don't even make it hard for yourself. That's the way the Feast of the Unleavened Bread went. Now, um, when we think about it, if we put it in today's terms, what, what might a feast of unleavened bread look like in today's terms? Mm -hmm. uh, no, no, bread, bread with no yeast, not puffed up, it's not light, it's... Um... I could just, I could just, I mean, all kind of bread, different kinds of bread, but none of that. I don't really it think has, we have anything we have no like meat. that, do we? Yeah, we got, we got low, we got there are people, there rolls, are. we have rolls, we don't and we do have, it, but Jewish people do. Right, we don't mm -hmm. do it. I don't think we have well, anything like that. Saying. The closest right. thing we have to it is we might have a convention, right? Yes. And our conventions uh, may start with a holy convocation, if you want to call it, and mm -hmm. may end with one. Mm -hmm. And then between times, there are workshops and other stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Right. But we don't have a stipulation about eating. No, mm -hmm. no, that's that's about it. Um, again, in here, you find that he talks about it being a. Uh, in, in this way, present the food offering every day for seven days as an aroma pleasing to the Lord. Mm hmm. So what do we, we, we said that the, again, the sweet smelling aroma is spoken of today. Mm -hmm. What provides that aroma for God? Our prayers. Our prayers. Oh, our uh -huh. prayers to him. Yes, 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 yes. yes. And, As our we praise. and our praise to him. Yes. As we do what we're supposed to do, as we give him honor and glory, all the honor, all the glory, 
You know, we sing these songs. Mm -hmm. All the honor, all the glory. That's a sweet smelling aroma sweet. to God. Yes, yes. And then when we think about it, hard or not hard, we look at it. What are the what are the animals that are being sacrificed here? Lambs and bullocks. Mm -hmm. Lambs. A ram. Mm -hmm. A ram. Mm -hmm. Two young bulls. Seven male lambs. All without defect. Right? A goat. Mm -hmm. A goat. Mm -hmm. and Those are the, the animals kid, that kid were sacrificed. Mm -hmm. Say again. Uh, the kid of the of a goat. Well, you know what that means, right? Also, the, the ch baby, the young. Yeah, young a baby goat. goat. A baby mm -hmm. goat. Because those are the ones who are uh, without defect. Those are the ones who are are pure. Blemish. Uh -huh. And unblemished, usually. Because mm -hmm. the older you get, the more prone to blemish you are. <laughs> oh, sure. That's the truth. That's the truth. <laughs> And I'm not even a, a goat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so there's that at the beginning of the year, we start with the Passover and the Festival of Unleavened Bread. And so now we go to uh, 26 through 31. 20. 28, 26 to 31. And mm -hmm. remember, you know what I'm going to ask you? I'm going to ask you the name of it. I'm going to ask you uh, what, what were some of the sacrifices, and I need you to tell me what they were and what, they, what the purpose of them was and all that. So let's listen and read. Oh, okay. Okay, 28, 26 to 31. On the mm -hmm. day of first fruits, when you present to the Lord an offering of new grain during the festival of weeks, hold a sacred assembly and do no work. Present a burnt offering of two young bulls, one ram and seven male lambs a year old as an aroma pleasing to the Lord. With each bull, there's to be a grain offering of three tenths of an epoch of the finest flour mixed with oil, with the ram two tenths, and with each of the seven lambs one tenth. Include one male goat to make atonement for you. Offer these together with their drink offerings in addition to the regular burnt offering and its grain offerings, be sure the animals are without defect. And that's 28, 26 to 31. Mm -hmm. What's the timeline? What's the name of the feast? Mine says it's the uh, harvest. The festival. Yours says, uh -huh. Yours says the festival of harvest. Mm -hmm. was, was festival everybody of weeks. Festival of weeks. Mm -hmm. This is and, you know, there's actually two here. Uh huh. One day and then one, well, two the days. The day of first fruits. The day of first fruits. And then um, let me see if they show it to you here. Mm. Yeah, they don't really show it to you here. Okay, Festival of Weeks. That was uh, uh, the Pentagons. Pentecost, 50 days from the Passover. Okay. Oh, no, I'm not coming here. 50 days from the Passover. Let me see. 
You got who's got a King James version? Let me see if I can see it. In. Janice. Yes. What does your King James version say? Uh, in which verse 27, 28. 28. 28. Meat offerings. Also no. on the day of the first fruits, when ye bring a new meat offering unto the Lord, after your weeks be out, ye shall have a holy convocation. You shall do no servile work, but ye shall offer burnt offerings for a sweet, sweet savor unto the Lord. Two young bullocks, one ram, seven lambs of the first year, and their meat offering of flour mingle uh, uh, with oil, three tenths deals unto one bullock, two tenths deals unto one ram, several tenths deal unto one lamb throughout the seven lambs, and one kid of the goats to make atonement for you. Ye shall offer them besides a continual burnt offering, and this meat offering they shall be unto you without blemish, and their drink offerings. Okay, I read that in the King James. So, mm -hmm. the name is the festival. It's the festival of first fruits and the feast of weeks. Now, as we Look back when we did it before. Remember the first fruits came and then you counted seven weeks after that mm -hmm. to give you to the Feast of Weeks because you counted seven weeks. That's why they call it Feast of Weeks. And then you have the day of Pentecost. So 50 days from the Passover. So it's in the spring and it's yearly. And it includes the day, the day of first fruits, the day of first fruits, and the fest, the feast of the weeks. Okay, it happens every year. It's in the spring, sort of like you know we count it from we kind of count it from Easter, because mm -hmm. Easter is kind of our Passover type thing, right? And we counted mm -hmm. from Easter the 49 days. And on the 50th day is the day of Pentecost. I don't know um, if you do it in your churches, mm -hmm. uh, the Pentecost day. Yeah, we do. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. We have so, a Pentecost service, yeah. So, you know, we counted from, we start from Easter and mm -hmm. you start counting the, the weeks mm -hmm. until you get 49 weeks. I mean, not 49 weeks, 49 days, which yeah. is seven weeks. Mm -hmm. And then that next day is the Pentecostal day. Mm -hmm. So that's what's going on here. So it's the, the name of it is the Feast of Weeks, also known as Pentecost, and the mm -hmm. First Fruits, the Day of the First Fruit. Okay. We got that together? Yeah. yeah. So now we're going to look at the offerings. What offerings do you see here? A meat. new meat offering. Mm -hmm. And what is that? That's a burnt offering. A burnt offering, okay. I see a grain offering. Mm -hmm. A burnt offering, a grain offering. Um, kid of goats. The, the, the continual and a drink offering. offering. A drink, a drink offering. offering. The continual offering is just is just um, speaking of the that the that the offerings continue on. Is that? It's not by itself a name of an offering, is it? No, it's not. Um, when they, uh, let me see where this says the continual offer. What? Give me that verse. Uh, 15, 16, I'm sorry, 16. No. We're not there. We're in the 
26 to 31? Um, I'm way over in um, 15, what? Tw oh, 29. 29. That's it. And it also talks about the continual offering in in 29 what? 2915. 29. We're in we're in chapter 28. Mm -hmm. Verse 20 26. Verse 26 to 31. That's where we are. Oh, okay. All right. Let me That's turn the page. That's where we are. We'll get to 2915 pretty soon. <laughs> okay. That's what it is. Okay. All right. So we okay. so far I heard the burnt offering. I heard the grain offering. And what else did I hear? The drink offering. The drink offering. It doesn't say the peace offering, but it does say convocation. Is that fellowship? No, that's just a day. Okay. That's getting together. That's true. Let's see. A free will offering. When you print the uh, during the festival, we hold a sacred assembly and do no regular work. Oh, uh, there's a drink offering in there. Did you say that? Yes. yes. Drink offering. Okay. Did you say the goat? No, we didn't. You see a goat it's there? Five. Yes. That's in 25. Where's the goat? Says uh in 29, mm -hmm. I have 29, 20, 28, 26. It 28, says 20. uh, mm -hmm, one male goat. 28, 26, I don't see that. Well, I have it in my uh what you call it in my that's the uh, um that's the burnt offering. Yeah. I don't see a goat. I have King James Version. I have NIV. Anybody else have anything? Yeah, else? in the in verse 30, it says one kid of the goats. Okay, there you go. There you go. So if there's a goat there, what's usually a goat for? Atonement. Nope. Purification. Oh. Uh, nope. So, no? Nope. Well, I said that because it says one goat to make an atonement for you. So yeah, I've seen that before, but whenever right. we see a goat, yeah. sin. it's always sin. Yeah, that's yeah. the sin offering. Uh -huh. Whenever we see a goat, it's always a sin offering. We saw we've seen that a couple of times here now, where it says, and a goat as a sin offering, and a goat as a sin offering. Go on, so whenever, so whenever we see a goat, we're locking, we see, we know a sin offering. An offering. Okay. This so is they, amazing, Dolores. I have read over this. I haven't seen none of this in the past. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> they skip right over it. They mm -hmm. say it doesn't mean anything, but it does. It says a yes. lot. It explains. I have a commentary. That lead that at the bottom of it, it explains each verse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, what are the purposes? We gotta always remember the purpose of a uh, 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 sin offering is for forgiveness. Mm -hmm. the purposes of a grain offering is thanksgiving and dedication. Mm -hmm. The purpose of the burnt offering is atonement. Reconciliation. The purpose of the drink offering is celebration, joy. Put that in your spirit. Mm. Put that in your spirit. Okay? Yes. This All feast. Right. And so this feast tells yeah. us that we have to have a holy convocation, doesn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hold it. This one says, "A hold a sacred assembly and do no regular work." 
And this one says, ye shall have a holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work. Mm -hmm. That's a guideline. No customary work. And this also was one of the ones that was uh, mandatory. It's one of the ones that was mandatory also. And again, we're going to use what animals? Two young bulls, one ram, seven lambs in their first year, one kid goat, all without blemish. And that is your... And then pull up. Yeah, pull mm -hmm. up. This is a bull. Mm -hmm. oh. That is your... That is your um, feast of oh. week and first fruit. That's right. The feast of weeks and the first feast of first fruits. Okay? And that is in the spring of the year. So you started the year with the Passover and the uh, Feast of Unleavened Bread. That's in the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. Then in the spring of the year, you did first fruits and you did Feast of Weeks. And they call it that because you count those seven weeks. Okay. And then all of this is continued in chapter 29. What's our time looking like? Okay, we can go. Chapter 29. Mm -hmm. Verses 1 through 6. And if you have if you have headings, you probably know what's coming. Yep. Oh, what is that? Goodness. Yeah, mine says the festival of the trumpets. Hmm. Mine says offerings of at feasts. Offering Ooh. for the festival of the trumpets. Okay, okay. Got a wide variety here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so notice, you're going to notice the time. Now we went from the beginning of the year to the spring. When you read this, you're going to see what's coming. On mm -hmm. the first day of the seventh month, hold a sacred assembly and do no regular work. It is a day for you to sound the trumpets. As an aroma pleasing to the Lord, offer a burnt offering of one young bull, one ram, and seven male lambs a year old, all without defect. Mm -hmm. With the bull, offer a grain offering of three tenths of an ipa of the finest flour mixed with olive oil, with the ram, two tenths, and each of the seven lambs, one tenth. Include one male goat as a uh -huh. sin offering. Okay, I can't even see the end of it. Okay, it's a sin offering to make atonement for you. These, in addition to the monthly and daily burnt offerings with their grain offerings and drink offerings as specified, there are food offerings presented to the Lord, a pleasing aroma. Okay, now you know what we are, what's the timeline? The drink offering, we talked about the drink offering. Mm -hmm. That is what I was not there, I guess. Well, I could have been. No <laughs> the drink offering. Okay, somebody say to Janice what the drink offering is. Celebration mm -hmm. and joy. Celebration and joy. And it's usually, um, they don't really say it here, but it's usually some wine or something that they pour on the um, on the altar. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So in this numbers 29, 26, we've already said it's the festival of trumpets, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and on the first day of the seventh month, you blow the trumpet. 
So when we get to the seventh month, where are we? We're July. Well, yeah, in the summertime. I mean, for us, it's July. Let me see what it is for him, for these people. First Let's day, see. seventh month, then you blow the trumpet. Yeah, let me see what the seventh month is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Tishri. For them, the seventh month was like September and October. Wow. Mm. September and October. Okay. So then you blow that trumpet first day. Remember, it's one day. It's one day. The Festival of Trumpets, one day. Festival of what? Of the trumpets. Trumpets. The trumpets. Okay. All right. So, what offerings? What offerings do you see here that they keep doing? Uh, the burnt, the grain. Um, the sin. Mm -hmm. But you, who said it? Meat, huh? meat offering. Say it again, Janice. What you say? Meat, meat offering. When they say when they say meat offering in the King James, what they mean is the grain offering. Oh, okay. Uh huh. What they mean is the grain offering. So okay. we have we have seen the burnt offering. We see the grain offering. We see the sin offering, and what I, what other offering do we see? Um, let's see. Grain, burnt, sin. Drink. 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 Yes. Drink. The drink. D -R -I mm -hmm. D -R -I -N and the Yes, I found it. <laughs> D yes, drink. Yeah. You so found it? Mm -hmm. yeah. Drink offering in 27. Yeah. 29. We're in 29 now. No, she <laughs> says 20. Oh. 29, 27. My thing. Not 27. Uh, 26. Six. Six. Twenty-nine. Six. six. It is also in twenty-seven. But we well, didn't we get that far passed. yet. No, we passed it. We are in chapter twenty-nine. I'm sitting there. Can you hear me? I said twenty-nine. Seven. Okay. Twenty-nine what? Twenty-nine twenty-seven. Don't go no, back. we're only on six. We went 29, one through six. Oh, okay. One through six. One through six. And so we have found the burnt offering. What is that mm -hmm. again? Atonement. Atonement. Reconciliation. Reconciliation. We found the grain offering. What is mm -hmm. that again? Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving dedication. We found the sin offering. What is that again? Forgiveness Forg for our sins. Forgiveness. The drink offering. What is that again? Joy and celebration. Joy and celebration. You all are doing great. So again, when these offerings are put on the altar and they're burning, it says that it's an aroma that's pleasing to God. Mm -hmm. So when the sacrifices are being made, what does the word of God say about that? When you are making mm -hmm. a sacrifice in good faith, what does he say? It's an aroma. Uh, pleasing. It's an aroma pleasing to him. So that's like our praise and our thanksgiving and prayers when we communicate. Our with praise, God. our thanksgiving and prayers. Mm -hmm. Pleasing to God. Yes. Pleasing to God. So he is, he's going all out trying to teach them how to worship God. Yes. When you get over there into that promised land, mm -hmm. this is what I want you to do. Mm -hmm. Don't and forget it. 
And when we get to the end of this, I'm going to give you the count of how many animals are used each year. Mm -hmm. Wow. So now we're getting down to the end of the year because we're in September and October. Let me see what our time says here. Okay. September and October. So now we can go down to seven through 11. Chapter 29. Verse 7 through 11. Do you have any headings? Because I have headings. Uh, they I don't. don't have numbers either. They have atonement for me. I have day of atonement. So do I. Oh, well, I'm in your version. That's why. Let's see what else we have. Uh, <laughs> see, I look in the King James the Version and I don't see any headings. So no. I'm looking at King Bow, James too. Bow, uh under 29 also in God's law is uh, under chapter 30. Are you in chapter 29? Chapter 29 uh, starts. Start at verse 7. 7. Uh, okay. You shall have on the 10th day of this 7th month the Holy Convocation. Keep going. Oh, okay. And you shall afflict your souls. You shall not do any work therein. Go to eight. But, but you shall offer a burnt offering unto the Lord for a sweet savor. One young bullock, one ram, and seven rams of the first of the year, and they shall be unto you without blemish. Go on. And, not, and uh, their meat offering shall be of flour ming mingled with oil through three tenth deals to a bullock and two tenth deals unto one ram. Several tenth deal or one lamb throughout the seven lambs. Wait, now that's kind of building up for me. Wait a minute. There's a knot here. Wait a minute. Can I go over it again? Okay, 29.9. 29. Nine. 29 nine. And their, their meat offering means the, the, the meat offering from the lamb, the lamb that we just talked about, the lambs of the first of the year. No, that's no, no, no. The meat. No, 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 no. Uh -uh. Okay. See, that's where you're getting confused. Remember okay. I told you that in the King James Version, they have meat. They, I think they wanted to say meal because mm -hmm. when they say meat offering, notice what they right. say. And their meat offering shall be a flower. Yeah. Yes, it sure does. So it's a grain offering instead. Mm -hmm. Okay, mingle King with James oil. Version says meat when it should be meal. Mm -hmm. Okay, so read it as meal and keep going. First meal. First. And they have verse, verse um, that's what it means. Verse nine. Verse nine. And their yeah, meal offering, uh, their meal offering shall be of flour mingled with oil, three tenth deals to a bullock, and two tenth deals to one ram. Several one to tenth ten. deals uh, throughout the seven lambs. One, Eleven says one key kid of the goats for a sin offering, beside the sin offering of atonement. Okay, my out of my picture is gone. I don't know what I that's kind of spread that out for me. One kid yeah. of the goats for a sin offering, besides the sin okay. offering of atonement. Remember? You have, I've already given a goat for the sin offering. Is that what he wants me to see? Mm-hmm. And the continual burnt offerings and the meal offerings of it. And their drink offerings. Okay. So let me read 11 out of NIV. 
include okay. one male goat as a sin offering, in addition to the sin offerings for atonement and the oh, regular okay. burnt offerings with its grain offerings and their drink offerings. Okay, that's a little clearer. Mm -hmm. So the mm -hmm. timeline, the name of this and the timeline. We already know the name is the Day of Atonement. So it's one day, right? Uh-huh. And it is the 10th day of the seventh month. Remember, we mm -hmm. just did uh, we just did the first day of the seventh month, right? Uh huh. For the trumpet. Bum, 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 bum. Then we uh -huh. go to the tenth day of the seventh month. We all in the seventh month. First okay. day we did the trumpets. We go and then we go to the tenth day for the day of atonement. Now this is another yearly thing. Okay. So what kind of uh what kind of uh sacrifices and their purposes? What do we see? Okay. Now my you were talking you were saying fifth day, and it says fifteenth day. No, it doesn't. It says we're on verse seven. Okay. Verse 7 okay. says what? Go back to 7. Go back to 7. Yeah, that's where we are. Okay. You shall have on the 10th day of this 7th month. Okay, that's it. A holy convocation. The and holy convocation. Lamb. I'm sorry. Lamb. You shall afflict your soul. So shall not do any work. But... Offer a burnt offering unto the Lord for a sweet savor. One young bullock. So so what's the offering? What's the sacrifice there? What is it for? For um, a, a burnt offering unto the Lord. A burnt offering. That's all burnt we're offering. asking. What's uh -huh. the sacrifice? A burnt offering. And a burnt offering means that we are offering for... Um, See, I need everybody to be able to just spit this out to me. A yeah. burnt offering is an offering for what? Atonement uh, for your sins and reconciliation to God. Atonement and reconciliation to God. You know, uh, if we had to, and we've already said that all of these sacrifices and stuff are sweet aromas, when we give God a sweet aroma, what is the first thing that we say in our prayers? We say various things, but think about it. What's the first thing we say? The things that we say and think. Let it be a sweet. Start it. Sweet start your prayer. Start a prayer. Everybody start a prayer in your head. Dear God. Dear God, or Heavenly Father, 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 I praise you, I thank you, and I, I, then I ask for forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, who art in heaven, mm -hmm. think about it. So you 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 give up those praises to Him, atonement, reconciliation, Father. Forgive me. I stretch my hand to thee. Whatever. Mm -hmm. Prayers of reconciliation. No. You know, what? whatever mm -hmm. I've done wrong, Father, I, I just lay myself on your altar. Mm -hmm. When you think about it, that's how you, you start your prayers. A burnt mm -hmm. offering. An offering of atonement, of reconciliation. Mm -hmm. Of amends, okay? Now, what mm -hmm. other offering do we see here? Oh, let me go back. <laughs> uh, Let's see. We may do one here. 
just a little. We said a burnt. Um, <laughs> and then um the second day. What? Look oh, at no, verse nine. What's verse nine? Oh nine. Oh, how did I get down? Mm -hmm. I just I realized what I well, look. Oh, now what did I tell you about meat in the King James Version? Grain. It should be a grain. It should, it should be a meal. It should be meal. It should be meal. Mm -hmm. So a grain mm -hmm. offering. So what's a grain offering? Oh, that's a that's a that's a corn. That's a thanksgiving to God. It's thanksgiving and dedication okay. to God. Grain yeah, offering. Can I? Ask, I'm sorry. Uh oh. Can I say this real quick so I don't get. Mix, yeah, mix go ahead. Uh, I thought you said a meal, talking about it. We, we're going to sit down to a meal, but no, you're talking no, no, about no. the grain that the meal, the flour kind of thing. Right. That we can right. Oh, okay. I thought it was right. M E A L. Right. It's as meal, which is a grain. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And sin, I see sin. There's a sin offering there. It says a goat. And the, uh -huh. yes, that's whenever you see a goat, that's a sin offering. It says one male goat for a sin offering. There you go. Of mm -hmm. atonement. And there's one other one. A drink offering. A drink offering. And what's that drink offering again? That one is oh, for... Oh, I'm sorry. I'll be quiet. No, don't, don't, don't be quiet. Oh, that's a celebration of joy. That's a celebration of joy. And it is 433. So I'm giving everybody some homework. <laughs> I, I can send this out if you want me to. Burn offering. Grain offering. Mm -hmm. Sin offering. Drink offering. I need you to memorize what those all were for. Okay. okay. Memorize what they were all for. Burn offering, grain offering, sin offering, drink offering. So do we also uh, want to, do you want to us to include the peace and the guilt or just those nope. four? Okay, just, just those, those four. four. Okay. Just okay. those four. That'll work. I say it again, Lorraine. Did just you have a question? Four. Just those four, uh -huh. she said. Those four. Sin. Just those four. And drink. Okay. Celebration. And so uh, that's all we're going to do for today because I, that's all the time we have. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Get good. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, he's teaching. He's teaching his new crop of Israelites how mm. to worship God when yeah. they get over in their promised land. Mm -hmm. Okay? Okay. So we're done. All righty. Janet. Yes. Janet, you want to pray us out? Uh, sure. Okay. Uh, our father. <laughs> Our mm -hmm. Father, mm -hmm. who art in heaven, Lord, Father God, let us not get so, so, uh, um, at a boy. Let us not put you on such a level, Lord, that we forget how holy you are, Lord. Mm -hmm. Let yes, us not Lord. forget that you are God. You mm -hmm. are all in all. You are Creator, God. Yeah. Yes. You are our all in all, God. You are everything to us, Lord. Let us not le lose that. Let us not lose that. Let mm -hmm. us keep your kindness, Lord. Holy, Lord. Holy, holy, holy. Mm -hmm. Are you, Lord? Are you? Father God, we enjoy your presence. We enjoy your presence. We enjoy you, you Holy Spirit. We enjoy that. Mm -hmm. Let us not forget that you are God. 
Let yes. us not forget that you are holy, 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 holy. Thank you, Lord, for our teacher, keeping us on the path, Lord, teaching us, having us to go over it and over it because it is meaningful. Yes. Because you taught it to us because you want us to look at you as holy. You want us to lift you up. You said if you be lifted up, you want us to lift you up. So we can't lift you up if we think of you mm-hmm. as just a regular, oh, you know, the man upstairs. Please, mm-hmm. Lord. Please. Yes. Please, Lord. Please, Lord. Please. We thank mm-hmm. you for this mm-hmm. lesson. And as we go over it, Lord, let us put it in our hearts. And you, so we won't sin against you, Lord, for mm-hmm. one thing or the other. So what we say will be a sweet Savor unto you, Lord. Please. Thanks, Lord. Please, Lord. We thank you, God. We thank you. We thank you. We oh, thank man. you. We thank you for this. We glorify you and we magnify you, Lord. Yes, we do. Yes, we thank do. you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, holy, God. Holy, holy, holy. Mm-hmm. God thank you, Almighty. Lord. Mm-hmm. Thank, thank you, God. God. Thank you. Oh, in your name, Jesus. Amen. 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 Amen.